Twitch Studio has announced that at the end of this month, May 2024, they are ending the Twitch Studio support. And you, some of you might be like, Psh, but I didn't even use Twitch Studio. And some of you, even people in my community will be like, but that's the only tool that I know how to use successfully. Well, in today's video, we're going to be talking about the option of moving to another platform. And I'm going to be showing you how to not only import all of your stuff from Twitch Studio into this platform, but in that same case, how easy it is and what all it offers for you to be able to do what you're doing. What platform is that? It's Streamlabs. Let's get into this video. For complete transparency, this video is sponsored by Streamlabs and they're paying me to tell you about their platform and how easy it is to make the transition to using Streamlabs desktop. And at the same case, uh, everything else that they offer within their suite of technology and things that they are able to do, it's, it's kind of nuts. Let's get into the video. First off, Streamlabs, not even two hours ago while I was preparing this video, announced a Twitch Studio importer. And this is a tool that I'll link down in the description where you can actually import all your existing scenes and stuff directly into Streamlabs to kind of make this change a little bit easier for you. The next thing you need to do is actually go and download Streamlabs desktop. You can get it from their website, which is streamlabs.com, create an account, connect all of your stuff. Uh, I would encourage you to go and connect as many platforms as you normally would maybe work on or stream on. And we'll talk about some really cool features that you might not have had in Twitch Studio that you can add on here in Streamlabs desktop. If you've never downloaded Streamlabs desktop before, you'll go through the onboarding flow where you'll see an options to import your Twitch Studio settings. If you've already downloaded Streamlabs desktop, you can re-enable this onboarding flow by going into settings, clicking get support and selecting delete cache and restart to automatically restart and load the onboarding flow you just saw. The next step is to actually open Streamlabs desktop. And as you see, we're actually in Streamlabs desktop right now. This is a scene setup that I have for my scene. And this is something that you can go ahead and pre-set up and save. And everything you do in Streamlabs desktop actually saves into the cloud. So if you do for some reason uninstall Streamlabs. You can always reinstall it or go to another computer, Windows to Windows, Mac to Mac, they don't cross by the way, and be able to have all of your overlays and everything saved to be able to be used. You just have to link your webcam and your mic and all that stuff. So to get started, let's get an overlay pack and kind of everything set up for what we need. I currently have Streamlabs Ultra, which means I get access to an entire suite of overlay packs that they have that are very in-depth, animated, everything like that. And if you're curious about it, we'll talk about it more later, but you can actually get a decent deal on Streamlabs Ultra if you want to try it out. But if you want to get something free, which they do include, you can just go to advanced search and you can just type in free and it will pop up a bunch of overlays that you can go ahead and grab and kind of get started with. Like this minimal blue was one that I actually got started with very early on into content creation. It has a stream starting and I'll be right back and as well as a main overlay and kind of everything is pre-done. So why don't we start with this one under minimal blue? So as you can see, here is minimal blue. It's already pre-loaded and then you can always continue to try out new layouts and new overlay packs by just clicking this down box and you can see every one of these that I've uploaded from before, even some that were for some St. Jude events I did, and everyone that you've actually imported, including the ones that would come over from Twitch Studio, will be in this drop-down box. You can always add, update, change, etc. So what you can do is click between the live scene, your starting soon screen, and be right back. And depending on if you have Streamlabs Ultra or you get a pack that has a special scene transition or even alerts that are included in with it, uh, they will go ahead and be installed with you. Now you do have an alert box here, and you can see everything's kind of pre-done and pre-configured and so I've selected my webcam under here and they also have chat which will be scrolling here and I can actually click this box over and under Twitch I can just send test and we can allow that to actually show up in and see that the chat is working on screen right here which works great. Now there is a delete me at the very bottom. You will need to delete this very bottom one and you'll need to add the appropriate game capture, display capture, or a window capture towards the bottom. Most people will be able to click the plus button and choose a game capture and it worked just fine, but you have window, game capture, as well as display capture, depending on what you're using. Just as a quick general rule, game capture usually works for most programs, but some, including things like Destiny 2 and some that have 
have anti-cheats will not play very well with game capture. So you'll have to use something like window or display capture. However, display and window uses more system resources. So just as an FYI there, you'll put that at the very bottom of the list. And basically you're done here. Your starting soon screen also will have chat as you can see, and the be right back will have chat as well as you can see. The next thing is to set up your audio under settings, which is this bottom left gear. You'll click settings, you'll go to audio, and then you will select your audio one device, which for me is going to be Wavelink game. And then for your auxiliary device as your microphone, mine will be the Wavelink mic FX. And once I click done, I am technically all set up and ready to go. I could go live right now, as long as my account is linked. And that would be your next step. Under stream, you're gonna be able to connect all of your accounts here. It might ask you to go to the Streamlabs website to connect multiple accounts. But once you do have them all selected, you'll be able to actually go live from the one that you select or make sure that that's the one that is your primary to go live from. And after that, it's pretty straightforward to go live if you're just going to Twitch, just select Twitch and go live. However, as you can see here, I have Twitch, Facebook, there's TikTok, uh, Twitter, YouTube, you can do Trovo, you can add Kick, you can add Rumble, it doesn't really matter, you can add them if you have multi-streaming enabled for your account. But you can also do horizontal and vertical, which is something that even as a free account you can do, uh, you can do two locations, one horizontal out and one vertical out. And to enable that, that is under the video tab, you can click the button that says enable dual input. And then from there, it's going to give you a whole nother kind of canvas to work with. And I'm not going to customize it right now. Just know that you can customize this other uh, output, set it up and go live, not only vertical to a platform like YouTube shorts or even to TikTok. Something else that's really cool that I want you to take a look at is you can go live to TikTok without using TikTok studio and without having a thousand followers by using Streamlabs. All you need to do is go to this link. Again, I'll leave it in the description uh, to be able to go apply for the application, blah, 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 the use of going live on TikTok from Streamlabs without having to have live access on TikTok. It's really cool. I would encourage you to take a look at this if you want to stream vertical and horizontal to expand your horizons and your viewership and all of your reach. Speaking on Streamlabs Ultra, obviously for starter, you're able to get some of the things that are kind of included. Everything we've talked about today has been dual output. You can stream to one vertical and one horizontal at the same time. So it'd be like Twitch and TikTok, Twitch and YouTube shorts, things like that. You still get collab cam adding a guest and you do get access to a bunch of other stuff that's in the free spot, but it's limited. But you can do Streamlabs Ultra. And if you use code Ultra Studio, which I'll put it in the bottom of the screen, as well as in the description, you can get seven days to try it for free and use my link because it will support the channel and you get a discount when you do that as well. So go ahead and, and continue or consider trying this out because you're actually able to get all of the destinations, just like what you see here, where I'm streaming to multiple different platforms and can choose vertical, or horizontal on how to be able to go out. Plus you get access to all of their library. You get a custom page and domain for merch and a whole bunch of stuff. You can do Twitch thumbnails, YouTube thumbnails, uh, panel makers. There's a whole bunch of other neat features that you can check out within Streamlabs Ultra. I would encourage you to try it out for seven days. And if you don't like it, you know, don't renew it or continue forward. But uh, the fact that they're letting you try it and have all of these features and try to go live on multiple platforms over Twitch Studio, I think this is a huge upgrade for you. Now, even even though I'm actually here and Streamlabs has told me to show you all this and talk about the platform, I do want to talk about some things that I know are restrictions with the platform and can be limiting to people uh, who do switch over. So here are those things. Number one, Streamlabs desktop is a resource intensive application and it can use more resources than Twitch Studio or even other streaming platforms that you could choose. Just know that all the other stuff that kind of is included here, alerts, browser sources and everything, as well as having all the other layouts and editors and everything, all of that still adds another little bit of extra overhead on your computer. So if you have a much dated computer or something like that, you might run into some issues. Now, there is a way to combat that. If you right click in the canvas, you can enable performance mode, which will turn off a lot of the moving parts of the actual Streamlabs desktop, but you can keep chat rolling. And this allows it to actually run 
on with a lot less memory, CPU resources, graphic resources, and it is a better experience for those of you with PCs that need that extra headroom to make sure the stream works. On the flip side, I'll offset the negative with a positive. Streamlabs fully supports not only multi-chat from actually being able to combine your chat from a lot of different platforms, not all of the platforms. Things like Twitch and YouTube are all combined into the multi-stream category at the top, including Facebook as well. Uh, so you can see chat all in one location and the chat box also supports combining the chats on the screen. And you can also do multi-platform alerts if you set all of those up or you can have all of that in one alert box rather than multiple alert boxes. Another thing that I love about Streamlabs desktop and I also do not enjoy is if you're a person who does multiple platforms, like for example, you're a Windows user as well as a Mac user and you have Streamlabs desktop on both, it will not save the overlays from what you create on the Mac and transfer them through the cloud over to Windows. It will only go platform to platform. So Mac to Mac or Windows to Windows. It's not a huge gripe, but those of you who are multi-platform and use different uh, kind of PCs and Macs to be able to control your stream or want to be able to use and keep everything in one neat place, that can be an issue. And then to finish this off again with a positive dual output natively in the platform is wonderful. I know there are other ways and solutions to be able to do vertical as well as horizontal streams in one platform. However, to be natively supported, able to be set up, streamed, you can actually tweet out directly, directly from the platform when you want to go live. It is a really simplified platform and kind of makes everything in one place without having to leave to go live to see your chat. It just works really well to keep everything in one application window. Oh, and the other things we didn't mention, they have a cloud bot that will sync on all platforms and they just added within this last week or so where CloudBot used to, when you turned it on, it went on every platform that was connected on your account when you went live. Now you can toggle it off per platform, uh, which is really awesome because I use it for queue systems and I don't want it posting on every single platform every time someone joins. To close this out, Twitch Studio leaving is kind of a sad thing because even I recommended Twitch Studio because it was probably the simplest way to get up and streaming for a Twitch streamer just getting started. Uh, but seeing as they're going and as much as Streamlabs has added back into their platform of Streamlabs desktop, it is a really awesome solution for you to be able to pick up and jump straight in because everything is in one place. Overlays, alerts, the chat, cloud bot, everything that you need is in one platform and you can manage it all from Streamlabs desktop. Some things you need to go online to the dashboard, but very rarely do you, you find yourself back in the dashboard. That'll wrap us up for this video, guys. If you wanna make sure that you sound good on stream, just as awesome as you look, please make sure you check out this video where I actually walk through all of the filter settings for your microphone to make it easier for you to have the best audio experience for your viewer. And this one where we actually go through multiple mics from several different brands and product ranges for you to be able to get the perfect mic that works the best for your voice. Thanks guys. I'm Brandon and y'all have a great day.